Hey, Shalom, Israel. First off, I would like to say, call Halal Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah Bahashim Rakhakwadash. I would like to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who taught me this truth. Also, would like to say peace and blessings to the hopeful elect, the brothers that's laboring in this faith in all sincerity and truth. Um, I just want to do just a quick video just to uh, exhort brothers that's in the faith in good standing, just to uh, be mindful, to watch. Uh, different uh, men and even brothers that especially a, a man that hasn't proven himself that's maybe new into the faith that's new among the body because the scriptures does says that uh, every brother will utterly supplant uh, in the book of Jeremiah the ninth chapter so these are just things as we uh, come into the time of Jacob's trouble to where the members within the body are going to have to get tighter and form a, a deeper bond, we have to basically purge out the rebels and the niggas, for, for lack of better word, that are among us. Because even like the apostles and the elders always say, of course, the men of Great Millstone, starting with the apostles and the elders, they have the 100% truth. And then the men, you know, within that order. But there are niggas amongst Great Millstone. So we always put that out there just to be fair. And just call it how it is. So hopefully, Lord willing, myself and brothers that's laboring in all sincerity, you know, we can endure this thing until the end, until the Lord, you know, delivers his elect. But in the time being, while we're working out our salvation, we have to prove these guys that are, you know, newly coming into the camp or standing on the other side trying to be in the camp. You know, a man has to be worthy of his credit. Because you got a lot of fair weather Israelites out there who only want to come around to have a good time when uh, food is being cooked and when drinks are being poured and basically when it's hangout time. But they don't ever really want to come around when it's time to put in work, when things are getting very heavy in the spirit, when spiritual conversations are prevalent within that meeting or when it's time to do the work. They slow to do that, but when it comes to kicking it, and having fun, they always quick to do that. You got to watch out for guys uh, who fit the bill and do this the most. They are always uh, wanting to go hang out and do this and do, the, do that. But when it's time to help out, maybe pick a brother up, maybe go pick up something from the store, just basically help out. It's like they, they MIA all of a sudden. So these are all characteristics of fair weather friends and fair weather Israelites. And we just have to make sure that we're, we're watching out for these uh, things and even amongst uh, of, uh, sincere brothers you know we can fall into these uh, traps at times you know and at that point you know a brother can uh, receive the correction the rebuke repent and move forward but the guys that ain't gonna be able to to, to be helped in this situation they're gonna have to be rooted out but without further ado before I ramble on too much I'm gonna go to the first precept this is in the book of Ecclesiasticus or Sirach Chapter 6, and I'll start at verse 7. It says, If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first, and be not hasty to credit him. And the scripture says, Try the Spirit by the Spirit. And we know that the Spirit is the word of the Heavenly Father, the, the, the things that are contained in the Bible. That's the uh, code of conduct and the standard that we as brothers and men in this faith are to hold uh, one another uh, 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 among. So, if you get a friend... You know, a, a brother that proclaims to believe and be down for this thing, you got to be um, not you, you don't have to be hasty to give him credit. He has to prove himself and mean and prove himself in his actions and not just what's coming out of his mouth. What he's saying, because Jake in the scriptures talk about Jake love to get lip service, but you should be watching a man's actions to see if he's deemed worthy to receive credit down the line. Seeing how he's conducting himself among the body, seeing his spirit and his countenance when it's time to go out on the highways and byways and put up the work, when it's time to meet with brothers and, and do a lesson or put up a show, when it's time to uh, uh, deal with spiritual things, when it's time to have a council, when it's time to, to pray over brothers and anoint brothers, when it's time to help out, pick up brothers, uh, have to put your money uh, together. All of these things that uh, are actions of how we prove men that proclaim to be among the faith because the Lord is not looking for no fair weather Israelite that's only around 
when things are all good, when things are looking good, so to speak. You got to be down in, in, in all things. Because even, uh, I know me personally, you don't want a, a friend or anybody around you that's only uh, down uh, as an opportunist just to serve their own belly. You want someone down through thick and through thin. It says, and how much more so the most high? Verse 8, it says, for some man is a friend for his own occasion and will not abide in the day of thy trouble. And that's, you know, what I'm going into. Because you got a, a lot of guys that's out there. You got a lot of guys that's out there and they're among great millstone who really only enthusiastic when it's time to, to come to, 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 to cook. Like the elder Ariala says, just being a chicken eat nigga, man. It's like brothers could be doing shows and going into uh, heavy uh, class topics a majority of the day. But all of a sudden, when it's time for the chicken uh, to come off the grill, this nigga uh, materializes. We ain't seen him in two weeks. And this is not intended for anybody specifically. I'm just speaking in general. But, hey, if the shoe fits, you know where it. So the Lord, you know, and our brothers within this thing of ours, we're not looking for no fair weather friends, no fair weather Israelites, a man that's a friend for his own occasion. You know, he only down just to, to kick it and have a good time. Now, we know that this brotherhood, that's our consolation from this uh, wicked, uh, perverse world. That's our escape from this world, having that bond, that bond amongst each other. But. The majority of our time collectively when we're bonding, you know, it should be uh, spiritual times, whether it's reading and studying the scriptures, doing lessons and shows, just having spiritual conversations. But of course, you know, we Israel, we Jake. Of course, we're going to have times where we listen to music, eat, drink, you know, have have a good laugh and things like that. But the spiritual end of the spectrum shall outweigh those things. And the Lord is only looking for men who are going to be down through thick and thin, whatever the case may be. But mainly when uh, the spiritual end is what's required. You got to be down for that more so than when it's just time to kick it. I'm going to read that again. This is uh, Sirach 6 and 8. It says, for some man is a friend for his own occasion and will not abide in the day of thy trouble. So here it is. As soon as you may need a ride and, you know, you just... You know, on your last uh, end or whatever the case is, this guy always is around when it's party time, when it's time to kick it. But the soon as you need him to come do something for you, no, 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 no signal or whatever the case may be. You know, MIA, AWOL. And that in this 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 spirit uh, fits some men that are, are dwelling amongst uh, the, the, the body of Great Millstone. Because we are out our own dirty laundry and we address things in house, you know. Now we do start with our apostles of Great Millstone, get on these other camps uh, when it comes to them going off in the doctrine. But we also call it how it is, man. If brothers amongst uh, the body of Great Millstone, if they going off and doing bullshit, acting like niggas, they gonna get rebuked and rooted up out the the, the church if it's to a level that. Merits them being put out. Verse 9, it says, And there is a friend who being turned to enmity and strife will discover thy approach, thy reproach. You know, so we don't want to be around uh, niggas, basically, that turns enmity to enmity and strife. Just guys that are just busybodies, always gossiping and murmuring, trying to sow discord. I'm going to keep going. It says, verse 10, again, some friend is a companion at the table and will not continue in the day of thy affliction. So, hey, you got a lot of guys out there when it's time to eat. As soon as they uh, get uh, word that a hey, such and such is having a cookout, they all for that. They rushing. They, they right on time for that. But whenever it's time to go out on the highways and the byways, time to meet for brothers to meet, to do a lesson or to, to, to have class or to do something spiritual or to do anything work related to help another brother. They, they, they out of pocket. It says, and will not continue in the day of thy affliction. So 
we in a spiritual war right now, but everything is going to uh, translate into the physical as we go into Jacob's trouble. So we don't want these type of uh, fair weather guys around us in the day of, of, of affliction. Verse 11, it says, but in thy prosperity, he will be as thyself and will be bold over thy servants. So when things are moving all good for you, when money is being spent, plenty of drinks are being poured, beautiful women are around, nice scenery, you know, everything's all good. Watching the basketball game, watching the fight. All of, all of, these, uh, all of these fun kick it hangout things, man. That dude, that fair weather Israelite, he's all in the mix. Then it says, verse 12, if thou be brought low, he will hide, he will be against thee and will hide himself from thy face. So that fair weather Israelite, that fair weather friend that I'm talking about, as soon as you brought low, as soon as uh, it's not all party time, when you may need to call on him to scratch your back to do you a favor, he might be against you, man. He might curse you out, get on you like, hey, man, you always doing this, that, and the third. Like, man, I don't always do nothing. It's like, right now, I need help. And you're supposed to be my brother. Why don't you help me? It says he will hide himself from my face. He's nowhere in the picture when uh, when you brought low. So no one's exempt. You know, we all in this flesh. So we just need to strive more that we don't come in this lot, that we're being sincere, upright brothers. We're being upright uh, men. Of faith and, and just carrying the standard uh, of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah with integrity, not just being a nigga, man. You know, I'm gonna go to another scripture. This is in the book of uh, Proverbs. Chapter 17. Yeah, this is Proverbs 17 and, uh, and 17. It says, A friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. So that's what the scripture says. A friend, which friend, it, it goes back to brother. It says, A friend or a brother loveth at all times, through thick, through thin. When things are going going up for your brother, when things are going down for your brother, you love it, your friend, at all times. It says, and a brother is born for adversity. So that means when you're catching hell, man, that's when you really need your brother when you're catching hell. And a good friend, a good brother going to make sure that he's accessible, you know, in the, in the day of his brother's adversity. Those are characteristics of a, of a good uh, brother or a good friend. A good man of the Lord, a man of faith. And that's how we should really treat this ministry, you know, not just always wanting to be happy go lucky when it's time to do uh, things that we want to do. But you have to also be prepared to make yourself uncomfortable in this faith, to do the things that are necessary for the building and the sealing of the elect, more so often than just hanging out and having fun. You know, I'm going to just move on to another scripture. Go to, um, yeah, I'm going to get this. First Corinthians 15. I think it's further down in this verse. First Corinthians 15. In 1 Corinthians 15 and 33, it says, hold on. Yeah, that's not what I wanted to get. Salaki Akim, I'm going to get another one. I forgot the one in Corinthians, exactly where it was at. If I find it, I might come back to it, but I'm going to go to something else I, I wanted to bring out. This is Proverbs 18. And this is at the last verse. 
Yeah, this is Proverbs 18 and 24. It says, a man that hath friends must show himself friendly. <laughs> it says, I'm going to read that again. Proverbs 18 and 24. A man that hath friends must show himself friendly. So in order to uh, receive a friend, you have to be a friend. It's a reciprocal uh, process, just like a relationship, because a, a friendship is a relationship just like between a man and a woman. And when a relationship, there's give and take. So you can't be the, the, the person that's just always taking, 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 but you're never bringing or giving nothing to the table. That's not an example of, of, of being a friend or a brother. It says a man that hath friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. So an attribute of a, of a, of a good friend is a person who he's going to be received well, he's going to have uh, plenty of friends because through his activity, through his actions, he's showing himself to be a friend. And it says, and there is a friend that sticker closer than a brother, which a friend is synonymous with being a brother. And it says, and there's a friend that sticker closer than a brother. And that could be a, a friend that's even closer to you than a, than a so-called blood brother. That was, you know, you have the same parents. And that's what the Lord's building among the body of the the, the, the hopeful elect. You know, like Yahweh Shah said, who are my uh my mother, my brother, my sister, them that do the will of the Heavenly Father. And we're supposed to be uh, in agreement uh when it comes to the faith. That's the common denominator that keeps us all together. So brothers in this faith, in this truth, we're gonna have relationships and bonds that's actually closer than our own family. So within that we have to make sure that we're not being fair with the Israelites, that we're always prepared to be available and to just be uh, serviceable men. This all being a part of our reasonable service, like it talks about, you know, I think Romans, the 12th chapter, where it talks about making your bodies a living sacrifice. And Yahweh Shai even said, greater no love than a man laid down his life for his friend. And Yahweh Shah, he was the greatest example uh, to date of being a true friend or a true brother, not being just a fair weather person that's around for his own occasion. Because really, it's a lot of work to be done, man. So being having a lot of friends, I know me personally, you can miss me with that. I, I have, you know, enough friends. It's been a blessing for the brothers that I'm able to labor among in the faith. You know, through the years, we've established, you know, deep bonds and we're friends and, and more than friends, we, we're brothers. So if a, if a guy through his action and deed is only showing himself to, to really be enthusiastic about being around when it's time to kick it, I really don't want to be around that type of person because it's just too much work to do. It's too much at stake. The election hasn't been sealed. We know we're closer through the prophecies coming to pass to, to know that the elect is almost sealed because the word has already spread out through the four corners of the earth. But the main reason why we don't need fair weather friends is because it's too much work to be done. It's too much work to be done to have to try to rely on a guy who only want to be around when it's time to eat, party, and bullshit, basically. I'm going to get this description. I'll, I'll close out on this one. Like I said, I didn't want to make it too long. I was just meditating on this point because this is prevalent amongst Israel and even amongst uh, Great Millstone. But for brothers, this is just exhortation to just watch these things because it can be a sincere brother coming in that spirit where he may needs to just be rebuked about it to where he has opportunity to repent. But some guys, they just need to be just tossed the fuck out, man. They're not coming in the right spirit. They're not coming to build because that's the, the whole uh, mission at the end of the day. We're, we're trying to build a tabernacle of David. It's a lot of work to do. So that should be our whole mindset and focus. That's a true indication of a, of a sincere man that's a part of the hopeful elect. He's always got the mindset mostly to build. Now, of course, we're in this flesh. We're brothers. We're going to have moments of downtime where we, uh, you know, have a feast and drink and maybe watch a fight and do things like that but our, our primary mindset should be on building and doing this work 
And here's the reason why. Uh, this is uh, St. Matthew 9 and 37. It says, Then said he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. So the harvest is plenteous, man. It's a lot of work to be done, and the laborers are few because the Lord, he's only looking for a few good men. We know that a multitude or a majority of the nation of Israel, two-thirds, according to the prophecy in Zechariah the 13th chapter, they're going to have to be put down because they're not going to get with the program. They're not, not going to... They're not going to forsake wickedness to follow their heavenly father through his son, Yahweh Shah. So the few men that we have, they're going to have to be uh, hard, hard at it, hard in the building process. So the men that we that we have building, we got to make sure that uh, they're qualified to, to build, that they're serious and sincere about the building and not focused on just what suits their uh, interest. Uh, I'll go ahead and read the last verse, St. Uh, Matthew 9 and 38. It says, Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. So we do pray, of course, that the Most High seals the elect. I know personally that's in my prayer every morning. I pray that the Most High seals the elect so we can get the hell up out of here. But also uh, in uh, Matthew, the third chapter, St. John, or not St. John, but uh, John the Baptist, he said, Bring fruit. That's meat for repentance. So we're not just looking for any damn body. You know, we're not looking for no fair weather Israelites that only want to just kick it and have fun all the damn time. Even though at times we do that because we're not I'm not trying to make it seem like the men of Great Millstone. We're just some uh, monks that just meditate Indian style 20 hours of the day and just read scriptures the rest of the time. That's not the case. But our mindset should be more so towards building and, and, and doing our obligations within the ministry than just having a good time. And that should be the mindset, you know, going forward for all men. So we just have to watch out and be circumspect for guys that are among us that are not coming in a sincere spirit to really want to truly build, but only just suiting their own uh, agendas and just things that are advantageous to, to their own uh, flesh and lust. So hopefully this made sense and was edifying to the body. I want to give all praise to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashim, Rechakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, Shalom, peace and blessings to the hopeful elect.